Hey guys, it's Matt from Electric All Wheel. I've got Baron here with me and we wanted to share with you just some of the updates that we actually did on the Mongoose Hitch slash Dolomite experience that we just completed. You can check out that build video on the electricallwheel.com YouTube channel as well as some other various places. The first thing I wanted to share with you was the original seat for the Dolomite really, really sucked. It was bad. I'm a big guy, 6'2", about 230, 40 pounds, so I need a seat to sit on. Now, I don't intend on keeping this bike, but I did want to get it prepared to make it comfortable, and, and knowing that I've ridden a few bikes in my lifetime, I wanted to make sure that I got a seat that works. So, as you can see, I did do a good replacement for a seat, and it does have a, a rear light reflector, which is nice, and it's not a huge surface area, but it's way more than the simple seat that was on there beforehand. I also wanted to add some pedals that were big enough for my big feet. So if it fit my feet, then it'll fit others. So I went with this set that I got from Amazon and it's uh, called the Puroma set. I'm very satisfied with them. They make a nice platform and it does work out well. So uh, I do feel like it was a value add tradition. The next major upgrade was the new brake calipers. I purchased the hydraulic cable brake calipers because I needed a little bit more from the brakes, especially in combination with this BBS HD. And I found that in these hydraulic calipers. There's a hydraulic reservoir in the caliper itself, and you can see that they look like traditional cable brakes, but they are not. They're cable hydraulics, and they do live up to their name. They're not very expensive, and we did find them on Amazon, so it was a, an easy grab. From there, I wanted to get into a position where the rider was more comfortable. Not only that, but we needed a setup that allowed for all of the real estate necessary for all the gizmos, gadgets, and doodads. One of the ways I avoided it taking up valuable space is by actually installing an egg rider. And while this looks simple, it's one of the most diverse and complex displays on the market today. And it will actually sync via Bluetooth to your phone and you can program the BBS HD, change your units, run some metrics, and it will give you readouts for a lot of the stuff you've got going on there. In conjunction with that, I wanted to put on some very ergonomic handles. And I have big hands and I like for the pressure to be equally shared and distributed across the handles. And these handles fit the build. They didn't break the bank, and they were of a quality build that allowed myself to feel confident in putting them on here. For all the right-handed people in the world, I wanted to make sure that the throttle was on the right-hand side. I pretty much wanted to make sure that gear control and speed was all there at the same hand. And in doing so, I went with a Shimano combo gear shifter and brake lever. This will allow for all control to happen on the right hand side by single pull and push and then the throttle will be there as a thumb throttle as well and then you have your typical brake handle. One of the issues that became prevalent with the addition of the combo gear shift and brake lever was the ability for the BBS HD to sense when I am actually hitting the brakes. So to avoid having to use the integrated sensor, I went with the hydraulic brake sensor and the addition of that sensor with the magnet with the, the Hall effect. So when I pull the brakes, the magnet separates from the sensor and it knows that I've actually pulled the brakes and it tells the BBS HD to shut off. On the left hand side, conversely, I did not put the same sensor. I utilized the Bafang integrated brake sensor handles so that it would have a more clean and refined look and eliminate any possible issues with the sensor that might occur on the combo gear and brake lever sensor. One of the bigger issues with these bikes is the straight crossbar that it comes with. And I wanted to provide a more upright feel, especially here in Florida. It's not any crazy mountain bike areas. We do have the Alafaya trails and other local areas that you can go to for some more off-road sourcing. 
but generally speaking, it's flat riding, on the trails, cruising, etc. So I wanted to provide a comfortable ride for this bike. So one of the bigger aspects of all of this, on top of the real estate that is provided, was the fact that the BMX bars bring your posture up. One of the things you have to be wary of, though, when you do this, is that the cables need to be extended. So in order to provide the upright posture and to get the real estate that's there with the BMX bars, you have to replace all of your cables. So you'll have to integrate your gear shift and brake lever cables as well. When I did do the replacement, I went ahead and replaced the stem. The stem on the other one was, uh, it extended out to provide the correct posture when you're leaned over. But with this one being upright, I wanted to shorten the stem so I can get the BMX bars close. And then you had a nice straight alignment going through the fork. This is my favorite thing, is the being upright when I ride and just having my handlebars out there for me. They are extendable enough and they are versatile enough for adjustment that I can move them forward and back. But by far the best aspect is the handlebars. Right after that is the grips for the handlebars and the way it sits. So one tricky thing that I had to deal with when I built this was to make sure that right here I didn't overlap where the gear selection changed and the thumb throttle depressed. So as you can see when you put it in, it might conflict, so that's one thing to look out for when you're building these. I hope you guys found this helpful, I really enjoyed this build. It's gonna be heartbreaking to give up this bike. I like it so much. I know a lot of you guys out there have built these bikes, so if you have somebody have, that has a Dolomite uh, or a Hitch, just like this one, and they're sitting there on that mongoose and they're not doing with it and wondering how to go about it, I would definitely suggest that you tell them about this build video, tell them about this upgrade, and then you can go about your own way, using this as a guideline to actually make the premium mongoose Dolomite electric bike that you want. Uh, all in on this bike, I believe I'm about $1,800 and I am not unhappy about it. I really appreciate everyone checking out this video. Please check out our website at electricallwheel.com. Check out the Instagram handle at electricallwheel. Check out our Facebook page and you can find us on YouTube at electricallwheel. We have some pretty exciting builds. I know I mentioned this earlier with the uh, chain cleaning. Uh, we will be working on a uh, Sun Baja trike. We're gonna put a BBSO2 750 watt mid drive on that. And then we have another chopper cruiser, which we're still dicing up. I'm tossing back and forth the idea of some saddlebags or not, but it's gonna be awesome either way. Everybody knows that feel when you're riding an e-bike. We'll check you next time. Please tune in and thanks for watching.